Hi, my name is Stephen Yang. I'm a Chinese patent attorney, a managing partner of IP March. Today, my topic is the highlights of the Fourth Amendment to China patent law. Um, so as you know, the new China patent law will take effect on June 1st uh, this year. Um, today is the 6th of April. I'm recording this video. Um, based on the information that I have in hand today. Uh, basically, that's the Fourth Amendment to China patent law plus the draft version of the implementing regulations. My talk consists of uh, five different parts. The first part has to do with uh, enforcement of patent rights. Second part has to do with uh, design practice. Then we'll talk about patent term adjustment and then uh, a lot of things had happened with drug uh, patent. Uh, and then uh, last but not least, we will uh, have a quick discussion about open license system. Um, again, the new Chinese patent law will take effect on June 1st this year. Um, a major aspect of changes on this time uh, has to do with um, enforcement of IP rights, patent rights. Uh, in the Fourth Amendment of China Patent Law, um, the concept of willful infringement was introduced. Um, and associated with that, um, punitive damage was introduced as well. Um, and if willful infringement is found, uh, the uh, amount of damages uh, awarded by a court can be increased to five times of the calculated damages. Um, in terms of calculating uh, damages, China offers four different ways. Um, the first way is um, the court will take a look at the patentees lost or the illegal gain of the infringer. If that's not feasible, then they will talk about uh, reasonable uh, t times of the royalties. If that again is not available, the court will uh, likely award statutory damage which is a fixed amount um, decided uh, by the judge based on the type of patent that is being infringed uh, and um, how serious the circumstance has been, uh, factors like that. Uh, in terms of um, statutory damage, uh, in the past, a lot of the Chinese patent litigation cases uh, only statutory damage were awarded um, because um, it's very uh, difficult to collect evidence and it's very difficult to collect evidence uh, to support the calculation of damages. Um, but the thing, uh, th things has changed over the past, I would say five years, and it's definitely gonna change further when the new law takes effect. Um, in the uh, new law, the statutory damage um, has an increased upper limit and uh, uh, increased the lower limit. The upper limit is increased to five times of, of the current limit. The current limit is RMB 1 million, uh, but it will be increased to five times of that, 5 million RMB, which is about 770 US, 770,000 US dollars. By Chinese standard, uh, that is a significant amount of money. Uh, hopefully that can create uh, deterrence um, against the infringer and uh, potential infringers. In addition to statutory damage, um, reasonable expenses uh, paid by the patentee for stopping the infringement can also be granted. Um, in the new law, this is um, provided in a separate paragraph. So it can be understand that in addition to the statutory damage or calculated damages, um, reasonable expenses can also be uh, recovered. The new China patent law offers, uh, in addition to increased amount of damage, uh, reversed burden of proof. And uh, reverse burden of the proof combined with increased uh, amount of damage uh, can definitely change um, the game. Um, keep in mind that China doesn't have a discovery system. So um, the, plaintiff the plaintiff has to do the, uh, the collection of evidence by themselves. 
And in most of the cases, they will hire uh, private investigators to do that. Uh, if in the lawsuit, the uh, infringement was found, but the evidence for calculating the damages are, are in the possession of the defendant, such as account books, uh, sales record, um, in a new, under the new law, the court will uh, can uh, order the infringer to provide evidence against themselves. If the infringers fail to provide such evidence or provide fake evidence, the court may determine that uh, amount of damage based on the plaintiff's claim and uh, based on the evidence provided by the plaintiff, even though it may not be a perfect uh, evidence chain. We've seen recently in some cases, uh, this practice has been exercised by courts. Uh, the courts have taken initiatives to collect uh, evidence. Some of them even went to social media account uh, of the defendant to find out uh, how many items they've sold um, as a, a marketing tool by the defendant and to calculate the damages based on that figure. Um, so that is uh, quite a different practice than years ago. Uh, definitely um, this will give uh, higher deterrence to potential infringers. Maybe in the future, it can be a better strategy for the plaintiff to claim high, um, but the downside is the court fee uh, that has to be paid are related to the amount at stake. So if the plaintiff claim high, claims high but lose a case, uh, they have to pay um, higher than otherwise. So keep that in mind. Second aspect of the change has to do with the design practice. Currently design is called a design patent. It has a term of 10 years. It will be extended to 15 years as of June 1st. Um, and China is getting ready to join the Hague Agreement. Uh, we don't know when this will happen, but uh, now we have a draft version of the implementing, re implementing regulations. Uh, there's a whole new chapter related to Hague Agreement uh, that, did, that will be added. Um, so it's reasonable to expect that China will join the Hague Agreement in the near future. But keep in mind that China has a relatively strict design practice. So even after China joins the Hague Agreement, um, office actions uh, will be expected. So when you file through the Hague Agreement and China is one of the destination countries, um, it's better to take into consideration the strict uh, formality requirement uh, of design applications. Um, the good news is after the law changes, partial designs will be allowed. Uh, something like uh, in what you can see in this picture, you can protect a portion of a shoe instead of a whole shoe. Uh, and you can disclaim the other parts by um, uh, using dash lines or dotted lines. A third aspect uh, of the change is a patent term adjustment. So for any invention patent, invention is equivalent to standard patent or utility patent in the US. After an invention patent is grant, uh, granted, for an uh, invention patent granted four years after filing date and three years from after uh, the date of requesting substantive examination, a patentee can request CNIPA to um, do patent term adjustment uh, due to the unreasonable delay in the examination. In the draft version of the implementing regulation, it says such requests can be made within three months from the announcement of patent grant. Uh, and the compensation of the patent term, the adjustment um, is um, based on the actual days of delay. But again, this is only the draft version. So we don't know whether they will be the final version yet, but uh, it's likely that um, in this particular uh, provision uh, compensation it's likely to be calculated this way. Um, there are a lot of terms, uh, a lot of other changes related to drug patent. The first one is patent term extension. Uh, specifically, the, the law says to compensate for the time spent in the review and marketing approval of new drugs, 
a patentee can request CNIPA, which is the Chinese Patent Office, to grant patent term uh, compensation for up to five years. And the total effective period of patent right after the new drug is approved for marketing shall not exceed 14 years. And uh, we don't have the exact way of calculating the patent term extension, but the draft version of implementing regulations uh, tells us uh, what is likely uh, to be used. Specifically, it says competition, compensation time equals the date that the new drug is approved for marketing in China minus the patent filing date minus five years. And uh, the draft uh, implementing regulations further said the request for patent term compensation, patent term extension, uh, can be made within three months from marketing approval of the drug. And um, another huge change uh, to drug related patent uh, is um, the patent linkage system. So in the review, process of review and marketing approval of a drug, the, the applicant for marketing approval of the drug and the relevant patentee may bring a lawsuit in court and request a judgment be made on whether the related technical solutions of the drug applying for marketing approval falls within the scope of protection of the drug patent. And National Medical Product Administration uh, will then make a decision whether or not to suspend the marketing approval uh, proceeding based on this uh, judgment. Uh, a very unique aspect of this practice, patent linkage practice, is that in addition to court, uh, relevant parties may also bring this uh, dispute to CNIPA for, uh, and request for uh, an administrative ruling. And uh, the uh, National Medical Product Administration uh, can decide whether to suspend, suspend the marketing approval proceeding based on CNIPA's finding. Um, Overall, in China, what has been changed to drug patent will lead to the establishment of a system equivalent to the system found in the US under uh, Hatch-Waxman Act. Right now we have Buller exemption, uh, which is, uh, was made available from the Third Amendment uh, since uh, October 20, uh, 2009. Now in the fourth amendment, we have fourth amendment, we have patent term extension, we have patent linkage. Now we also have a catalog of approved drugs in China. We will establish a patent information registration platform for approved drugs, which are equivalent to the US orange book. Um, and uh, in addition to that, uh, CNIPA and National Medical Product Administration jointly published implementing measures for the early resolution mechanism for drug patent dispute. It's a trial version, a draft for comments. And the Supreme People's Court also uh, issued a judicial interpretation to provide guidelines um, uh, in the trial of patent civil cases involving drug marketing review and approval. Um, in addition to all of these, China is likely to introduce a data protection uh, rules. Uh, National Pro Medical Product Administration several years ago already published a trial, like a draft version um, for this purpose. It's called Implementation Measures for the Protection of Drug uh, Experimental Data. None of these are final rules yet. We don't know when they will come to in, uh, into effect. But it's, with all this in place, China is definitely uh, establishing a system uh, equivalent to, the, to that um, in the US. So the US practice and uh, Chinese practice when it comes to drug patent are further um, harmonized. Last but not least, open license system. Uh, China is, is uh, drawing on the US, UK and uh, German practice Specifically, uh, if a patentee uh, can, uh, a patentee may uh, express interest in writing to the patent office about his willingness to license his product, his uh, license is patent to anyone and specify the rel relevant royalties and method of payment, then CNIPA will announce this offer. It's called open license. 
a penalty can withdraw its offer of open license and uh, CNIPA will then make the announcement of, of the withdrawal. Uh, but uh, even after it's withdrawn, uh, any previously granted open license will not be affected. And anyone, if he or she is interested to take the license, automatically get the license if uh, such a person informed the penalty in writing and pay the fees according to the spe specified terms in the open license announcement. A patentee that offers open license and the potential licensees can still negotiate even if the terms has already been uh, specified in the open license statement, uh, it's still negotiable individually. And patentee that offers open license may only grant ordinary license and they cannot grant sole license or exclusive license. And uh, to further encourage patentees to offer such open license, uh, during the implementation period of the open license, um, the annuities um, paid by the patentee may be uh, reduced or even waived. So this concludes my presentation. Um, this is a book that I wrote published by American Bar Association. You can uh, refer to that book for a lot of uh, um, uh, information about China patent system and uh, practical uh, tips. Thank you so much.